Hey guys, um, I have missed you. Last week I launched um, my course I do every once in a while on work your biz like a boss and I tell you I never expect it to be so labor and time intensive. You know it's like I go through everything and then I get there and um, you know, like like the day and then after, after a launch seems to be the most busy. So um, anyway, I definitely have missed you guys. I've been wanting to do this training for a long time. We will have a slideshow. Let me make sure you can hear me. Okay. Now, I am doing this from my new home. I don't have any pictures behind me or anything like that, but I am literally sitting here in my bed with this view out my window and just surrounded by what I consider to be such a blessing. And so I'm going to be sharing the story uh, on my Instagram stories or IGTV. I haven't decided which in um, um, a few days, hopefully. Uh, it just depends. But uh, I'm having to wear this weird head thing because my awesome microphone is at the office and I just did not want to leave and go do it there. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, how you fascinate or how people see you. So uh, you can get your assessment of your uh, fascination advantage, that's what it's called, and I'm going to give you all the information about that uh, at a website that I'll give you during the training. But what I want to preface the, that with and what I want to, um, what's the word, uh, encourage you is to keep in mind this is how people already see you. And I just had a client that I mentor uh, each week, and she was shocked at how people see her. And I told her, well, because they see you that way, you need to see yourself that way. So remember that. This is how people already see you. This is how you communicate and how people perceive that communication. Okay? So let me transition to the slideshow. Uh, let me go over here. Okay. And some of you may be familiar with this, uh, I don't know, but um, there are seven fascination advantages, which you can see here. I want to point out before I get further into the slide that the one that says rebellion, that is um, innovative or innovation, okay? So uh, we'll get into those in a second. And um, I normally have a joke, but I don't have one for today, and I am going to the gym after, and so I want to go ahead and just dive on in. So the fascination advantage assessment was developed by Sally Hogshead. She's a master marketer, master copywriter. Uh, she's done work for Nike, Mini Cooper, Coca-Cola, a lot of other um, you know companies that are household names. And if you're like me, you might picture this when you hear her name, and it was a little bit disturbing. And I couldn't make myself say hogshead hardly. And then I found out that a hogshead is actually a barrel measurement of wine or beer. So no more nightmares, nightmares no more like, oh my gosh, you know, this is so disturbing. Um, it, this right here, hogshead is a barrel measurement I can live with. So I just wanted to get that out of the way because if you're like me and very visual, that could be disturbing. Now... Sally measured over 700,000 people over a decade to develop the science of fascination. And she then used her research to build marketing systems for IBM, Twitter, Twitter the YMCA, and thousands of small businesses. And she defines fascination as the most powerful force of attraction that draws customers into a state of intense focus. So what that means is when you're operating and communicating out of your fascination advantage, and I'm going to get into each one of those in a second, when you do that, you actually become more attractive to your clients and they become more focused on what you're staying because you've basically gotten into your zone of, how, of who you are as a person and how you communicate. I love this quote from her, and I want every business owner to keep this in mind. Better isn't better. Different is better. And so you can use your fascination advantage 
to make yourself stand out above your competitors. You know, there's so many network marketing companies. There's so many real estate agents and insurance agents and, you know, the brick and mortar um, businesses of jewelry stores and tire stores. And, you know, and not to mention if you're an online entrepreneur, how much competition you're fighting. And so, Comparing yourself and showing why you're better no longer works. You need to be different. And your fascination advantage is how you are different as a business and entrepreneur. So think of it like the purple cow. Um, oops, let me get back. So, uh, and I heard this story from a guy that wrote a book called Purple Cow. I can't remember his name, but he said it's kind of like, you know, city dwellers who go for a drive and they see cows at first and they're just fascinated by all the cows. But after a while of being out in the country and seeing all the cows, you're not really that fascinated by them anymore. But when you see a purple cow, then that would grab your attention. So you need to be a purple cow in the midst of all the other regular cows. Another great example is... Uh, uh, what's your fizz and I do have a blog post on that that I highly recommend because I've got some videos also that you can watch and learn this so I heard this statement by a businessman actually I think he's now transitioned to where he mentors business owners but uh, and again I can't remember his name and I'm so sorry that I do that guys but he had this example he asked why do people buy coca-cola so everybody's like well for the taste and he goes well unless you're one of those weird people let's say that you go and get a, you know a coke and you open it up and you get a drink and then you forget about it and you come back later you're probably going to throw it out because it's lost its fizz so he said what you purchase from coca-cola is actually the fizz and so you've got to ask yourself what is your fizz people buy benefits not products so you need to list your three benefits so for example I'm working with my client this morning we um, had a couple things that we came up with and one is um, making the complex simple and no details fall through the cracks those are two benefits that her customers get when they do business with her so what are your benefits and they're usually tied to the emotion of whatever product or service you sell so if you uh, need a real estate agent you're gonna have the emotion of I need my house to sell within a certain time uh, I need a new house and all of the stress all of the details everything that comes along with that what benefits do you want in a real estate agent and so if you need to research this with some of your current customers of what benefits they get from you that's fine do whatever you need to do but tap into the pain points that you know you can uh, alleviate tap into the aspirations of the people that they want to become when they do business with you and here's the thing if you use your fascination advantage and you get that attraction and that intense focus on you what will happen is you will create a rapport people will spend more money even on an inferior product or service if they like you and there's a lot of research to back that up now when you tap into your fascination advantage your message is heard and remembered your conversations more persuasive your customers more engaged and your sales more numerous more importantly, you'll learn how you best communicate, making interactions natural and authentic to who you are, creating a stronger rapport. I think one thing, and just as an introvert side note, so if you are introverted, I think a lot of times we uh, can tend to, and probably extroverts do this too, but I'm not an extrovert, so I'm going to speak from what I know, that we can try to mimic or make ourselves into um, the people that we really admire or some of the influencers that we follow and we'll try to tap into their fascination advantage and that is when we're least persuasive that's when we're least authentic and we can get inside our own head because we're not confident in how we're communicating because it's just not natural to us once you find your fascination advantage you need to stay within those guidelines as much as possible because that is how you will best persuade and build strong rapport okay so here are the facts 39 percent of business to business buying is based on the skills of the salesperson rather than the price quality or features in other words the ability of the salesperson to build rapport and truly connect with the client and his needs not just follow a script number two the higher the income of your client 
you're paid for who you are more than what you do. In other words, when your clients and customers have more income or disposable income, they have wealth, they will pay for who you are more than the actual product or service that you sell or that you do. Also, and like I um, have already said, I got ahead of myself, consumers would rather do business with a person they like and trust, even if that person offers a lower quality product or service. Now, here are the seven languages of fascination. Innovation, which uh, showed itself as rebellion in the very first slide. Passion, power, prestige, trust, mystique, and alert. Okay, so let's go through each one of them. The language of creativity is innovation. So you're forward thinking, meaning you want to stand out and not do what everybody else is doing. You're very entrepreneurial, meaning you don't go the norm. And you have a very hungry mindset and fast, feisty attitude. You're also bold. And you can tend to be so bold, even to the point of shocking with no apologies. In other words, it doesn't bother you at all to be that irreverent, um, bold, wow type of brand and then not be sorry for it. You're also very surprising. You think ahead of the curve and you're a visionary. So you want to show what the world can become, not what it currently is. So you've got four pillars for each fascination advan advantage, uh, four marketing pillars. And so number one, invent surprising solutions you are able to see things and connect the dots of seemingly unrelated things or turn something old into new. And so you want to invent those things. You want to have space in your day and in your business plan for merely thinking and innovating and asking questions like, why are we doing it this way? What would happen if we do it this way? Also, do the opposite of what people expect. People see you this way. So you want to make sure you deliver on what they expect from you. And so they expect you to do the opposite. If people ever start thinking of you as stable and you always do the same thing, you are not operating in your fascination advantage. Also, infuse a dose of vice. In other words, it will probably need to be edgy, whatever it is that you do. Now your um, catchphrase is change the game. So invent surprising solutions, turn something old into new, do the opposite of what people expect, and infuse a dose of vice. Now the passion, fascination advantage, is the language of relationship. You're expressive. You'll use vivid words, colors, and images. Uh, you're optimistic and present a life is good brand, and you show us how good things can be. You also are very sensory. These are the restaurants where you walk in and there's bright, vivid colors and images and rich textures uh, so and smells. And so you engage the senses. Uh, you're very warm. You wrap us up in a warm blanket and serve us mental chocolate chip cookies. And you're also social. So you, you have this ability to make us want to share and participate in the conversation. So you just pull us in. Now, your four pillars are you want to woo with wow. That means from the minute someone walks into your place of business or does business with you, you need to have that wow factor in vivid colors, vivid words, vivid images, present that life is good, and um, engage all of the senses. So everything from the texture of your product, the the colors of your office, the uh attention to the tiniest detail of a vase or, uh, you know, a piece of furniture. Uh, everything needs to engage that. If you uh, serve something, it ain't just water. You've got all these different flavors of water. You've got different flavored teas or whatever it is. You have that richness and that relationship fill. And then also you want to put lust before logic. In other words, you want to build the anticipation of fielding, fulfilling a craving your client has. In other words, um, they will throw logic to the wind because they see how their life can be with your product or service. And so their intense desire to have what you're offering, they will just, you know, throw it out of the, uh, throw all their logic to the side and then just go ahead and make that purchase. 
and you also want to create a strong and immediate emotional response. So this is definitely not for the person who doesn't like to smile or visit with people. You know, this is a, a person that has a passion, a fascination advantage. They love people and they love color and brightness in life um, in a very bold way. So you want to connect with emotion. That's what you're really good at. Power. Now, this is my primary fascination advantage because you will find when you do the assessment that you have a primary and secondary that when combined makes you into a certain art type. So power is assertive. You're competitive. You pursue goals ambitiously to help your client win. Like it's not enough that your client do well, does well. You want them to dominate. You're goal oriented. So you have specific and ambition, uh, ambitious outcomes for yourself and your clients, meaning results are very important. You're decisive. You'll take action where other people are trying to figure out what to do. You're already doing it very purposeful you'll have the answers and help others with those answers and you're opinionated so you have very strong beliefs and you share them with candor so you need to lead the way and you need to take control without being controlling and that's you know that's important because I find people with the power advantage and speaking uh, as one who has that advantage I have to regularly measure myself and how I'm dealing with my clients to make sure I'm not trying to control their business, not trying to control their own thoughts or opinions, and I'm not trying to be controlling. Uh, I am merely leading them. I am guiding them. And so I have to be really careful with that because I will tend to want to just go in there, get things done, and yet that would make it into my business, not theirs. Also, you want to pursue specific goals. So get those goals nailed down and then be an expert authority because people look to you as an expert authority. So you need to lead with authority. So where other people might be, you know, less confident in their decisions, you need to be confident in your decisions and just go with it because that's how you best lead. And don't second guess yourself. Now, if you make a mistake, admit it. But, um, you know, with the power, usually you have a pretty good idea of what you need to do. Uh, am I getting the language of confidence, the language of relationship? Yeah, I think I am. Okay, so prestige is the language of excellence. So you're ambitious. It's not enough to be good. You have to be the best. You also are results oriented and you have very clear and specific goals. You're respected and that means that you relentlessly earn top results. You're aspirational and so you create a desire uh, by being out of reach for most people. Think Lexus. Uh, Lexus, Mercedes, they're, they're out of reach for most. And so that creates a desire because they present a picture of the person you want to be. You're also elite, meaning you create a desire in your clients to spend more and work harder to get on the inside. So increase perceived value, set a new standard, develop emblems, that's very important, and limit availability. In other words, when you do events, you need to limit seating. Uh, if other people charge 50 bucks, you need to charge 500. You know, whatever it is, whatever you feel comfortable with, but you need to have where those that do business with you, they feel that they are part of the elite. So set the standard. This is my secondary advantage, fascination advantage, and this is a language, language of stability. So you're steady in the midst of a chaotic and fickle marketplace. You're very dependable. So you follow through on exactly what you promised, no matter what. In other words, keeping your word is very important to you. You're familiar, meaning steadfast, reliable, and you have proven ideas. In fact, if you have ideas that aren't proven, but you know they're good, you can even feel a little bit uncomfortable sharing those or promoting them because you just don't have the proof. You don't have the data. Um, but sometimes you just need to go with those and I guarantee you'll offer some type of benefit and then if they don't work, your clients can definitely, you can shift gears or they can fire you. In fact, I told one of my new clients, I said, if I don't deliver in 90 days, fire me. And then comforting, you bring comfort and assurance. It feels like putting on a favorite pair of jeans and you're predictable. You don't surprise your clients, which is why they like doing business with you, which means you definitely don't want to pull out some innovative card and start freaking your clients out. They like that you're steady, you're familiar, you're comfortable, you're dependable. They don't have to worry about any surprises. 
Now your four pillars are repeat and retell. In other words, you're gonna, you know, this is what we're gonna do, and you know, retell, uh, you know, what you're doing, keep them in the know, follow through, have follow up, be authentic, accelerate trust by being consistent and predictable, and use familiar cues. Now, if there's any brand or fascination advantage where a brand needs your face on it, it is trust. There either needs to be a logo that, you know, just exudes trust. Your face needs to be on everything with a smile. Like you, it's you as a person that they trust. And so you need to take advantage of that. And then um, your uh, slogan is build loyalty with consistency. Mystique is the language of listening. So you're very observant, meaning you don't do all the talking. You're calculated. You're like the James Bond of the Fascination Advantages. Calm, cool, and collected. You carefully select what you say and what you won't say. You're very private. You're selective of who is in your club. In fact, a lot of people probably don't even know if you're married or have children. You're curiosity provoking because you're so private. So by withholding details, you create that curiosity. And then when you do speak, it's very selective and it carries weight because again, you don't do all the talking. It's like um, everybody listens when E.F. Hutton starts talking. It's That's kind of how you are. For those of you that have been around for a while, you'll remember that. So your marketing four pillars are protect information. You don't want to give too much information out because you're a mystique. That's what makes you uh, important to your clients. That's how they see you. And so if you're giving away too much information, you're like, whoa, what is this? Chatty Kathy today? You know, you want to spark curiosity. Use it to your advantage. Ask questions before you give answers. And then build a mythology by creating stories, traditions, and beliefs around your brand. And only insiders have access to that information. So don't reveal everything at once. You want the journey to be uh, one that has mystery and build on that. Make them, they need to be in suspense, you know, make them wait for all that information. And then finally, the language of details is alert. So you're organized, you're methodical, planner, you follow systems, you're very detailed. I mean, every detail is correct. Nothing slips between the cracks. You're very efficient. So you communicate with clarity and you respond with careful reasoning and no emotion. You're very precise. You check and recheck, test and retest. You fix mistakes and then you repeat again. Also, you're methodical. So you're able to watch over every moving part and instead of focusing on the bigger picture. So where innovators are the big picture, you are focused on each moving part and what it will take to bring the, the bigger picture to pass. So um, that means really that if your fa uh, primary fascination advantage is, innovate, is alert, your dormant will be innovation. That would just be way outside of your comfort zone. So your marketing four pillars are sweat the small stuff. That's what you do. Create urgency. So you want limited time offers, limited quantities, limited seating, things like that. Divine, define the consequences and deadlines. In other words, use that alert to communicate the pain of not buying, the cost of not doing business with you. But use rational facts, not emotion, because people that are drawn to your fascination advantage, they are typically very rational and don't like a lot of emotion. So protect with care. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of here and I'm going to come back to, oops, okay, I wonder if, let's see, I'm going to transition here. So I'm going to put in the um, comments where to get your uh, fascination advantage. I'll type it out, but it's um, howyoufascinate.com. And then I'm also going to put in the comments um, how you can create your anthem. So when you do your fascination advantage assessment, you will get your primary fascination advantage, your secondary, and then your archetype. She has an audio book called Fascinate. And then I think she's got another one. Um, Let's see, I've got right here an audible, how the world sees you or something like that. I'll get the title. But what you're supposed to do is build an anthem. Yeah, how the world sees you. 
is the other one that she's got. So you want to create an anthem. It's a two word phrase that is basically your, your thing, what you do. So mine is genuine solutions. That, that's how I operate. So she'll help you do that with this um, little PDF. It's very simple. I'll send it to you uh, or put it in the comments so that you can also have your anthem. And, uh, and then just see it every day. You know, put it uh, in your marketing materials even. So howyoufascinate.com and then I'll go ahead and put uh, in the comments um, where you can get the worksheets to do your anthem. I highly recommend purchasing the extras and really learning more on this. But I do have... Um, let me grab it. Uh, let's see. On my blog, I did, I think it's a brand like Blackbeard. And that's a good one. Let me do a quick search and see what blog posts come up where I've got um, this topic on there. Yeah. Brand like ba Blackbeard, What's Your Fizz, and Dr. Watson think like Sherlock. Okay, so hopefully those things will help you and I am so glad that we got to do training and hopefully I'll be back on track next week. But if you got any questions, if you want to share your fascination advantage, I would absolutely love it. And I would love to, um, by the way, guys, have uh, coaching sessions. I need 10 more people to do a coaching session with for my podcast. I've already done one. I've got one other lady I'm doing tomorrow. It could be anything business, anything introvertedness, anything extrovertedness, anything emotional intelligence. I, the, there's no topics that are off limit. It could be technical details like, you know, marketing and Facebook ads and things like that. So whatever you want, um, I, I really would love to sit down with you and do a coaching session. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have 10 left. I've got eight spots left and I'm about to promote it on, promote it on Instagram. So if you want to do that, DM me and we'll get that scheduled. We can do it by phone or we can do it in person if you live here locally. So have a good night. I'm going to head off to the gym and I will talk to you next week.